that you have ex ex direct experience in election campaigning, and it would be good to see like the positions that you work with and know. Uh, well, how have they have, how have they crafted their campaign to suit the voters? And the other thing is also like I remember like you spoke at a fifty B forum, uh, uh, Pilihan Jalan Raya atau uh, Pilihan Raya, and it's very interesting in this context because because it started off in, in a Pilihan Raya and basically ended with a Pilihan Jalan Raya. Uh, Danny uh, Ray and uh, colleagues there, uh, friends. Uh, well, my experience as a campaigning, I mean. I, I've been campaigning manager since the student days when I was campaigning uh, for Club Sosley's, that was uh, my younger days. And in, in 2008, I was a campaign manager for Nuroliza. Uh, and then it's the by election of uh, our friend uh, Zaid Ibrahim, I was a campaign manager. And uh, basically, uh, well, I uh, was working very hard for Nuroliza uh, just because she's very pretty. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, I'm talk, going to talk about this film, yeah? not about the past campaign. Yeah. Uh, this one is, I think, is a, is a. I when I was asked about, about this film, I don't. I for me, it's nothing real special. And you know? the friend will say, real special, you know. It is because I come from the tradition of Latin American. They are very good in documentary. I come from the tradition of Solanas, you know. If you know Solanas, it's uh, the, the Hall of the Furnace, uh, the, the time of the fire, which is an anti-imperialist uh, uh, film uh, about the history of uh, Latin America. And this one is actually is the opposite. I don't know why uh, this uh, Rachel is American or not. And what is the film? This is she look carefully, you know. It's less on politics of Bolivia, more on how to sell a PR job so that you engage them next time, you know, because young people, like, this is how I look at it. Uh, I have really no worries this because when this uh, APCO came here, uh, I mean, Pakata Ryan was a bit worried, you know. I said, no, we don't have to worry about that. There's one thing that all the expert, foreign expert, including Le Ryan and Bach and all that, they do not have the Malaysian sensibility. They could be imported from America, United you know, States, Dubai, Abu Dhabi, Qatar, wherever. They do not have the sensibility. And then on top of that, they do not have the Malay sensibility that is 60% of the population. On top of that, they do not have the Kampong Malay sensibility. Done. They could be up cold, they could be standing in a Fifth Avenue in New York. They are, at any time, they lost. And you, I just show you an example, yeah? I just show you an example. If you look at it, this is our friend Trisha was saying about the, for, the, the how they advise Pemandu. You know, now in Malaysia, before they like to have conferences, conferences. Now they don't have conferences. What they have now is workshop bankel. So now Pemandu have a lot of this bankel. And then look at it. Yeah? One of the very clear example now, how the foreign bankel come up with the idea the three thousand income group that Najib proposed in the last budget should be taken, the money should be taken from IRS, the, the, the income tax department. You check the amount of money from income tax. This is typically an American idea. In Malaysia, fuck, who pay taxes, man? Right? How many people register in taxes? So now, there are big problem. How to find out? Yeah, because you have donkeys and buying donkeys, so that's the result. So that's why, because how to quantify and qualify the family with 3,000 under 3,000 income group. The American advise them through income tax, IRS. That is very American. So they are now in a problem. So don't worry, election will be delayed because of that. <laughs> okay, now, now, look at that. And then they were trying to, they were trying to sell this. But looking at it semiotically, okay, there are three guys standing here, yeah? There are three guys standing here. Gori, uh, Goni, the other one is uh, Morales, my hero, street fighter. Uh, he's always for the street. Uh, the other one is uh, the other one is Manfred. Okay, these three guys. They're, okay, there's other other people. Eleven or whatsoever in the film is a contender for the one. Okay, but what is the most important thing? If you look carefully, yeah, in one of the images, yeah, and the first thing the images. This guy, he was, of course, he's American. For all intent and purposes, he's American. He was brought up there. His father was exiled in America. He put out a cigar, the luncheon, with the female journalists. Look carefully these images. They are not Latinos, you know. They are immigrants. 
the Latinos were not there. And Luke Nabla said, Oh, the Campasaneros, they came to the suburb. This is what one of the girls said. They were talking over the, over the lunch and they said, So they are worried. This is typically the Bangsa crowd is worried about the Krinchy crowd. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> you say, Wow, the Krinchy crowd is coming here. No? But, but, <laughs> you say, that's, that's what, that's why you look at it. So, because, look at it, their faces. Their faces are all Matsale. They are not. The real people, Latinos, they didn't show their faces now. The first thing they appear is in the Kedai Jahit, you know? The first thing in the sewing machine shop, the workshop. That's the first time the real land Bolivian. Now. The Napoleon doesn't have sharp noses, that are fair, they're not blonde. Not like those journalists, the female journalists there, you know? And they're always at the background. And then they show you they are the machine. You know what they show you? They show you barefooted. You know what? All of them wearing slippers. You recall, bring back your memory. And that is the supporter of Ibu Morales. You know, they're coming to the street. You know, they are there. And they didn't show them. And they, what else? And then, all the time, as Ray was saying, this focus group. I mean, this idea of this focus group, like now they're having now, uh, Pemandu. This is exactly as an important idea, focus group. Look, I, I hope everybody will play the same game. Let us subvert all this focus group every time. Every time I receive a phone call from the, so I always ask, I always answer them wrongly, totally. Get confused then. What the fuck they want to give up? I will tell them I support them. Yes, you do answer them opposite way. In my blog, I always tell people, answer them opposite way. Fuck the poster, you know? Well, mine, they will say minus three or four percent. When they interview me, they are really sure it's 10, 15 percent salah, you know? So why? Why should you, why should you answer honestly to them? Why? There's no reason why you should answer to them, honestly. You confuse them. You will say, no, 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 I support Dr. Mahathir to be the next one. <laughs> <laughs> you will say, yes, that's what you should do as a responsible citizen of Malaysia. That's what you should do, you subvert them. You subvert them. Okay, now the focus group. The focus group, you know. Look. As Ray was saying, the glass, uh, I suspected, you know that glass, the people in the focus group do not see the director and uh, those people, uh, Jamie and uh, all these people talking, you know. And that glass is special glass, you know. Yang boleh nampak one way, you know. In the custom, at the airport, they always have these glasses, you know, so that the police can look at you if you are trying to smuggle something, lah. So that's how they do it. So now, this focus group, this idea of focus group is trying to package, yeah. This, this, I disagree with this about. Okay, I, I also study advertising, yes, like Trace or so. Yes, it's good. We can package. Okay, I love to package Anwar Ibrahim. But what is the point? No, no, no. What is the point to package when actually, when actually the guys are, okay, let me tell you my experience trying to package Zaid Ibrahim. <laughs> this, this, this is classic. This is classic. Zaid Ibrahim is unpackageable. <laughs> He, he engaged me professionally to do a campaign for him. I told him, Zahid, apabila kau dekat Kuala Kubu Baru tu, masuk kedai kopi Cina tu, di lah lama-lama. Okay, for those who are not educated in Bahasa Malaysia, I asked him to stand a longer time in Kuala Kubu Baru in a Chinese coffee shop. And he asked me, what apa? He asked me back, what is the point? The point is that you just keep on smiling and shake hands and touch baby. But these are cliches. <laughs> <laughs> these are cliches. These are cliches. It is not going to solve any political problem. And we can see toward the end. You know, toward the end, the guy flew out again. Now, because why? You can, you can fall off sometime. The, the real thing here, I think, what this, this film is, it's a really, really, really propaganda film, is that to con you, to con the people of Latin America, also to con the people here, and I'm sure there's young upstart here who think I'd like to advise Anwar Ibrahim. No, it's a lot of them around, you know? All these advertising things, you know, scratchy and scratchy, you know? All these people, they all come around, right? they're all trying to make money, fast back. They think they know how to drive. Hey, you don't know, you go to the kampung, huh? They shit in the river, you know? <laughs> I don't think so scratchy and scratchy, you know about that, you know? So, look. So what happened? Scratchy and Scratchy is an advertising company from London. <laughs> For you who doesn't know, okay. They, ever, they, they were advising Margaret Thatcher once, Scratchy and Scratchy, and scratching all the way. Okay, now, look at it, sorry. Uh, yes, there's this thing about being said, uh, how to sell it, the simplicity, blah, blah, blah. Yes, 
at one stage, yes, for a limited period, you can resolve this contradiction. There's a major contradiction here. I mean, Treasure Yo was saying that, or oh, between urban rural, you know. Actually, it's bukan perbezaan. Though. I don't like to use the word perbezaan. It's a contradiction. It's a contradiction between urban and rural. It's a contradiction. I mean, the 10 major contradiction, the very classic word of Mojitum, you know. You read that, you know what's a contradiction. So this one is basically, it's a contradiction that is happening in Bolivia. Okay. It's about privatization. People are angry about the privatization. People want job, people want housing. Okay. For one limited period, yeah. Yes, the advertising, they managed to finally, on the day of the election, eh, to the last seven minutes, the firm, when the election day, they become 22.46%, the rest was 2020. Okay, they won. Okay, they won only by 20 something, just 4% more. You know? So, okay, I thought there going to be a, another round of re-election. No, they, he became a president. Look, okay, you can, you can, for a while, you can diminish the contradiction, you can contain the contradiction after six months, isn't it? People come out to the street again. Because why? It's not resolved. So this thing, this thing about focus group or about election, and that's one statement there, you know, which is, I think a lot of people forget about it. I think that is for me, besides election, it's right, um, sexual intercourse, you cannot control when you have orgasm. There's another one, I say that. Every five years, people have to vote. I think this idea is very, very subversive. This idea is very, very stupid. Why should you wait every five years to change the government? I don't understand that. Why? Huh? Why do you have to wait five years? For every day they hit your head, I have to wait now. Wait for the election to come, I can change that. Why? Why these people that are? So this idea, telling you, telling the people of the third world, Malaysia and all that, we must wait. Kita tunggu lah election, kita tukar kerajaan. Why must you wait? There's no reason why to wait. If you don't like it now, you change it now. Yo, that's just my proposal. And then look at it. <laughs> really, I mean, there's no one. So this idea about every five years, no, it's a kind of, it's kind of romantic, you know? The whole world now, we have elections. No? For me, this, I've always mentioned this, is procedure democracy. What happened now is a classic example in the third world country where they employ American advertiser, they have a, and a focus group. Listen. Something is coming here also, right? This pemandu pemandu is like Trisha. Then I'm sorry, Trisha is local. Maybe it's not engaged by the pemandu now, you know? Yeah. And she's not the consultant of pemandu. And yes, they are really paid highly. And you can see one the contradiction. The people that even so, 95% of the world and people are angry. Yeah, local. Banyak masalah, yeah. Kerja mahal mahal, gaji mahal mahal. You see, like 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 yeah. So that's also another contradiction between the local and the foreigners. And the finally, yeah, what is all about here? It's about the wealth. They, this Rachel doesn't handle them. What is it now? What is it? So it is for me. It's not about election. It's not about contradiction. It's not about that. It's about how these two, three, four people think that because. And you must remember, yeah. You must remember, we are part of the third world. We have been colonized. You know. We always think. The white motherfucker is always better than us. <laughs> That's what I say. Look, you look, you look that guy who stand out there. You, if you know American, if you know American, he's from the southern, you know. Southern ni, kau tahu kalau di Amerika southern ni orang kampung lah, lah, dia kampung ulu cung lah. But, but because to do do you, you see the tall guy, the accent is southerners lah. Southerners ni tak, kalau southern ni kalau kalau Jawa tu ulu Jawa lah. So when he stand, he's talking the president. No, in America, in America, I don't think so. He ever have access to the White House. Can't get White House pun tak dapat tau. But in the third world country, yes, they access. Why? Because they have white skin. That's why. You see all of them, yeah? All of them. All of them. And that is basically the mentality. Now, the same thing is happening in our country, you know, yeah? All in this focus group coming in, advising. And I must tell you the same thing in the Pakatan Rakyat recently. There are also circles of people, right? uh, circling Anwar Ibrahim. They are from America, young graduate, young punk, you know. So I just look at them, hey, you have no idea, right? you do not have the sensitivity. The same thing, you know. But I heard that Apko had bungkus only, you know, because I've heard these cases, yeah. because they cannot have this thing. So, okay, looking at, back at it about this firm, uh, they were trying to tell us, you know. If we do this kind of thing, if we package it, this is very 
uh, a very subversive idea that are encouraging us to package our leaders and you package it nicely, we can con the people. You can con people only for, I mean, this one, seven months. After seven months, Morales. And the most important thing, I'm not sure now who is the president of Bolivia. The other guy, that guy came out out of nowhere, you know? As this transition, the guy with the beard, no, no, okay. One thing before I end up here is about black propaganda. This is very interesting. It was, yes, it, they, they mentioned it just now, yeah? This is clearly, they say that, it must not come from us. Nampak? Bukan dari kita. It's not come from us, somebody else. But Rachel did not show us what was the really the black propaganda, except they dig up and found out uh, that guy was formerly military and showing his picture as a former uh, uh, Latin American is always uh, very scared of a military because one after another also that's a major point but we don't know what else you know and this come back to Malaysia the black propaganda yes there's a lot of black propaganda <coughs> but let me tell you some of this black propaganda doesn't really work honestly you know I was just talking to Ray just now no? you want to, I, mean, I mean just look at the black propaganda against Anwar Ibrahim First, he fucked boys. <laughs> then he fucked Chinese prostitutes. And it's fucking confused, isn't it? <laughs> the whole nation is confused. He like boys or is he like Chinese prostitutes? And on top of that, when he went to the fuck shop, he bring his friend too. That's worse still, you know. <laughs> so, so, so these are the whole thing. So the black propaganda. Everywhere else we can see the black propaganda. But I just like to see how vicious was the black propaganda in Latin America. I mean, if we could think it, yeah. But there's something else that is different from Latin America and here. I'm not sure how the media there is access because from what I look at it, it seems that the two contender, Morales and the other one also, have the access to television to have their own advertising. Here, it's impossible. But to be honest with you, I prefer it here, yeah. That's why I always say I do not support CIJ. Why do you want to have independent journalism? It's better to have Utusan Malaysia like Utusan Malaysia, star like star, and all the newspaper like this one, so that people read Malaysia Kini and people read Tukatiu. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much.